Well hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to OLC TV for some more Total War Three Kingdoms Furious Wild DLC with a new campaign starting in the 194 A World Betrayed start date as my least favourite character possible, Liu Bei. Uh, I did promise I would play him. Last time uh, I tried to play him I played him on the uh, 182 Mandate of Heaven uh, start date but uh, due to during that period I got uh, verified as content creator by CA and that gave me access to the press copies and I cocked up with uh, installing it and I lost everything from the last one. So this is a rerun but I don't particularly like the 182 start date as much as the 194. I really like the 194 start date just because it's a little bit more realistic with how things are laid out. Now Liu Bei, those of you who have followed the channel will know that I'm not particularly keen on him. Um, certainly not particularly keen on him as the romantic ideals are portrayed of how he really was. In reality he was a very different character to how he's portrayed in Romance of the Three Kingdoms. He was a mercenary for a period of time. Um, I think Rafe de Cresmini's description of him being more like a condottieri sort of makes sense. He was a general, he had a lot of troops with him, he travelled with an army, he wasn't really a grounded character for a long period of his career, not really until he took over uh, Ijo from Liu Zhang. Um, but he was ambitious, he was quite good at betraying people as well, so it doesn't really fit with this virtuous ideal, uh, idealist that he is portrayed now. And I'm going to play him sort of more how I would see him being played. I'm not really going to stick with this virtuous idealist nonsense. Um, and the play focus style of companionship, which may lead me into troubles. But let's be honest, Liu Bei had real troubles in his life because he the actions he took. So, you know, it's going to make it slightly realistic, I believe, if I do it this way. Now, he, of course, starts with Zhang Fei Guan Yu and Zhao Yun. A little bit of history, why they are where they are. Let's have a look at this map here. So, Liu Bei, as we can see, is here in Xuzhou, Xu province. Now, Xu province was the land of Tao Qian. Now, uh, Liu Bei, of course, does not start with Tao Qian. Liu Bei starts off in a place called Zhuo, Zhuo County, which is sort of near Beijing, which is sort of up here-ish. Um, I think they have it on the new map. I could be wrong. I think it might be one of the settlements on the new map. Um, we, we'll find out. We'll conquer up there eventually, I'm sure. Um, but he started off up there, and he found employment leading a sort of volunteer group of locally recruited uh, people uh, to help fight against the Yellow Turbans. And it is over this period of time that he meets the likes of Guan Yu and Zhang Fei. Now Liu Bei, of course, has a history of being taught by Liu Zhu, meeting Gong Sun treating Gong Sun like an elder brother and being very, very close to him. Um, so once he's met Guan Yu and Zhang Fei and once he's fought for the Han armies for a little bit, he actually ends up getting employed full time by Gong Sun Zan. And he helps Gong Sun Zan in a lot of his wars between sort of the end of the Yellow Turban Rebellion to 192-193 CE. Um, and I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail. I have videos about that if you want to see them in my badly animated histories. Um, but basically, he leaves Gong Sun Zan. Um, he, he actually, Gong Sun Zan puts him in charge of the auxiliary, uh, which is 1000 Wuhan cavalry, um, and he sends him to support Tian Kai down in Pingyuan, which is why in the 182 start date you end up with a chunk of land in Pingyuan, where he's fighting against Yuan Tan, who is Yuan Shao's son. And they devastate the area, completely devastate the area. It's also during this period of time that he's working with Gong Sun Zan that he meets Zhao Yun. Now, he starts with Zhao Yun in this 194 start date. There is absolutely no question in history that Zhao Yun was not with him this early on. Zhao Yun doesn't actually join Liu Bei till about 200 CE when Liu Bei has joined, for a short period of time, uh, Yuan Shao. This is after he's been beaten by Cao Cao and he flees to Yuan Shao. That's when he rejoins with Zhao Yun because Zhao Yun's brother dies sometime in the early 190s and he goes off mourning, and I believe, and this is just my interpretation, mourning is normally two years, but he spends a lot of time missing from history, so I believe he didn't want to return to Gong Suzanne's army, and he also didn't want to betray Gong Suzanne and join Yuan Shao. So he sort of stays at home, is my feeling, because for such a character to go missing for a chunk of time, it's a little bit odd. So I just feel he was in mourning for that time, and then he rejoins Liu Bei at Ye, um, after Liu Bei 
uh, appears in Yuan Shao's court having been defeated by Cao Cao. So we have Zhao Yun, which is great because he's fantastic in this game, but we shouldn't really have him. We're also going to get a lot of Tao Chen's other officers who I'll discuss as we come across them. Now, we are, of course, friends and allies with Gongsun Zan. It doesn't actually play that out 100% in how the diplomacy works in this game, but we are pretty close. We're also pretty close to Kong Rong, but Kong Rong is going to collapse very, very quickly because he's next to useless. And also there's a game event that just basically triggers him to collapse as soon as one of his towns is taken. Yuan Shu, however, is ambitious. He's beneath us and he is looking to take over Xuzhou because Yuan Shu has a higher rank um, in the Imperial, uh, sorry, in the Empire than Liu Bei. He also had a higher rank than, like, as a no as a noble, he had a higher sort of nobility than Tao Qian. So he had a claim on Xuzhou through that and through some very weird political dealings. Um, now, Tao Qian and Yuan Shu and Gong Sun Zan were this triumvirate that were fighting, but on Tao Qian's death, Yuan Shu wanted direct control over Liu Bei because he didn't fully know or trust Liu Bei, and Liu Bei didn't fully know or trust Yuan Shu, even though they were all technically on the same side. Um, of course, that led to bad things and they started fighting. There is also Lu Bu over here whose rebellion is doomed to fail and he will flee our way too. And we all know what happened there. Um, I have done a perfect start uh, for this start date. I am not going to be following that. Um, I know how good it is and how useful it is, but it's been a long time since I've done it and we've got a new map since that time as well. Although a lot of uh, what I did in that will still be relatively good. But oh, there's like Pong Chong and stuff like that has been uh, uh, expanded on this new map. So things are a little bit different. So it's not going to work exactly the same. Um, we work through prestige, as we know. This will give us more positions and increase income. It increases uh, if generals are satisfied. And satisfaction can be managed with unique assignments. Uh, this is, he, he also has like a whole load of benefits uh, as well down here. Like he has the E archers. Now Ejo is actually over here, so I don't know why, like this is something where I'd rather he had like the flying army or something, which were horse archers um, as his unique. Uh, but the E archers were actually, you know, he did use them to very good effect defending the likes of Hanjong and stuff like that later on. He really should... I, th I personally believe they should be tied to the locality rather than tied to the individual, but hey, he has them. He's not the only person to have them as well. I think Liu Zhang has them. So they're sort of, I mean, they're very good, but it's sort of not unique to him. He has the Shu Han uh, tax collection building, which gives uh, better replenishment. He has Unify, which means that he can confederate other factions from the start of the campaign, which allows him to actually confederate like Liu uh, Biao, for example, very, very, very easy and uh, he can integrate Han Empire settlements, which allows him to take land again very quickly. We know about Guan Yu, we know about Zhang Fei, we know about Zhao Yun. Let's get into the game. I'll see you in it. Zhang'er又此,终有长大成人的一天。戒时无备,必须独当一面。做出抉择。
。主公，陶谦大人过世了。虽然他的领地现下归您治理，但也有不少人并不认可您的继任之举。比如藏霸，他背叛了陶谦，决定占山为王。如今他治下的山岳地带。满是匪徒和乱党横行，那么须得将其剿灭才是。然则现下棘手之事甚多，听闻袁绍正打算侵犯孔融的领地。的确如此，主公需当机立断，是援助孔北海还是固守领地？如今曹操忙于平定内乱，我等暂且获得了片刻喘息之机，但绝不可大意轻敌。此外，袁术在江南已时时图谋不轨。主公身负重任，而现下却时间紧迫，刻不容缓。主公乃是汉室宗亲，需竭尽全力以保大汉江山。Okay, so there you have it. A little bit of the background. The storm rages on. Several long years have passed, Liu Bei, since the coalition ended, and you were forced to forge on without them. Quite an interesting point there. He wasn't part of the coalition. He did possibly want to join the coalition, but instead decided on joining Gongs and Zan. There is some evidence that he was raising troops to join them.、Um, however, he ended up fighting alongside Gongs and Zan、uh, as、uh, part of a force that was trying to put down a rebellion in the northeast instead, and then continued to fight against the Yellow Turbans in the area,、uh, as well as take up a couple of minor government positions. One of which he had to flee from because he. Not Zhang Fei. He beat up the <clears throat> inspector sent to discuss how he had been promoted and probably remove him from that position because of the corruption in court. Not Liu Bei's fault that he was going to lose that position. Definitely Liu Bei's fault that he decided the best way out of that was to beat the shit out of the guy who was sent to deliver the orders. However, carrying on, since then the tyrant has been slain. Yet the land is no closer to reunification. We、must continue to strive onwards against all enemies to restore the hand to glory, save the emperor, and thwart the ambitions of those who would seek to tear the dynasty down. We need to build up our power base. We need to protect Kongrong, which is all but impossible. We need to keep an eye on Liu Bu and Cao Cao. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on them. Zhang Ba's arrogance ascends. Zhang Ba's arrogance has continued too long. Despite his proven skill in battle, he consistently endangers others with his reckless behaviour. He must be removed from the equation and the land allowed to heal. Without the threat of him continuing to do it harm. Now Zhang Ba, in this he's a whipping boy, but actually Zhang Ba was a serious, serious commander.、Um, he went to banditry、uh, after Tao Qian's death. Actually, Tao Qian dies probably a little bit early、um, in this game, just for the sake of start dates. They've twisted it slightly so、uh, Tao Qian should be alive at this stage, but he should be dying really soon.、Um, however,、uh, Zhang Ba. Um, became a bandit. He was never properly eradicated by anyone in the area, but he did submit to Cao Cao, and he became one of Cao Cao's key、uh, flanking commanders in the campaign against Yuan Shao. He held the right flank against Yuan Tan, put pressure on the right flank, and just prevented、uh, Yuan Shao from being able to use his not necessarily greater numbers, but his ability to. Project across a greater、uh, stretch of land than Cao Cao's main force was able to handle, and so yeah, he he basically、um, forced Yuan Shao, him and Xia Hudun's actions over in the west, forced、uh, Yuan Shao to come straight down and fight the Battle of Guandu, which is exactly what Cao Cao had planned. Very important man, and he was part of a lot of major engagements over time. Never as the main commander, of course. Um, but as a field commander, no less. Very important general for Cao Cao. Right. Before we carry on, let's see what we got. We've got a great glaive. Probably not that useful with all the people. We'll start with a craftsman and an inspector.、Uh, Storm rage on mission issued. Now let's have a gander at who we have here. So we have Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhao Yun. So、uh, this is interesting. Just a note about Guan Yu here. So Guan Yu. Um, at this stage, I crap didn't mean to move off here. Guan Yu at this stage. Tended to be with Liu Bei, whilst Zhang Fei tended to be commanding a separate force and acting on his own, which is why you end up with Zhang Fei commanding the garrisons, whilst Liu Bei leads the main army off to fight Yuan Shu, for example. Which is yeah, the cause of <clears throat> what what happens from that point onwards is that Zhang Fei gets drunk, beats someone up, Liu Bu takes the land, etc., etc. 
We all know those stories. But there's probably a reason why. Guan Yu and Zhang Fei both were recorded as being like the joint commanders of Liu Bei's bodyguard, but by this stage, they were not. Zhang Fei was operating separately from the main force, which suggests he'd taken over because, you know, they weren't that high ranking at this stage, they didn't have that many men, but suggests he was taking a more independent role, more like a sort of Yue Jin or Yu Jin type character, possibly even slightly higher up, like a Shao Dun type character for Cao Cao. So he's a general in his own right, operating as a, uh, a major with his own force, whilst Guan Yu is kept in command of the bodyguard, which suggests to me that Guan Yu was probably still acting as Liu Bei's bodyguard, which is why he stayed with him for so long. Zhao Yun, of course, at this stage shouldn't be here, so we can discount him. He eventually does take over the role as one of Liu Bei's bodyguards a bit later on. Um, but right now, he's off mourning uh, his dead brother. Guan Yu is operating as his bodyguard. And aside from them, he doesn't have that many fighting commanders. What he does have, however, is the likes of Zhen Yong, who is a youth, uh, a childhood friend of Liu Bei's who's followed him since the very beginning, probably even before Guan Yu and Zhang Fei. And he would act as Liu Bei's envoy, his emissary, and his lobbyist. He becomes extremely important um, as uh, a sort of advisor to boost uh, Liu Bei's relationship with other factions, though he, of course, was quite a blunt man <laughs> in his own right. Um, he did this alongside the likes of Mi Zhu, who was uh, part of the big Mi clan, which were very, very powerful, extremely wealthy individuals in Shuzhou. Uh, Mi Zhu was the elder brother, Mi Feng was the younger brother. Now, Mi Feng was more of a fighter than uh, Mi Zhu. Miju was a propagandist and an emissary who worked alongside Zhen Yong and somebody who's not here right now, but Sun Qian. The three of them worked together. Um, they were sent off to act as emissaries to help uh, Liu Bei forge relationships with Yuan Shao, Liu Biao, Liu Zhang, you know, all of that stuff. They acted as emissaries mainly and they boosted Liu Bei's personal reputation around the country and boosted his propaganda around the country. And they were extremely effective at that. Tao Shang, of course, is Tao Qian's son. We have no idea what happens to him in history. Um, Mi Fang has the dubious record of being an officer under every one of the three kingdoms. An officer under Cao Cao, an officer under Liu Bei, Shu Han officer specifically, not just under Liu Bei, an officer of Shu Han, and an officer of Dong Wu, of Eastern Wu, under Sun uh, Quan. So he's an interesting guy. He, of course, is the one who didn't get on with Guan Yu, betrays Guan Yu, which allows for Guan Yu to be beaten and captured and eventually beheaded. Lady Mi is their sister, and she becomes, if she is not already at this start date, Liu Bei's wife. Right, enough of that. Let's have a look here. On the old followers front, what do we have? Trade influence for you for now. Pig ain't any use, but a pig will be used for you. Sort that out. None of these guys are going to be any use to you. That will work with you, and I think this will work with you, because you're quite good. Uh, nothing else here. Um, as far as weapons go, I don't think anyone can use that glaive. Yes, like I thought, it is not overly useful. Um, he can, because he's odd like that. Uh, but we'll keep him with what he's got. It's much better. All right. Enough of that. We've had a look. We've done all that stuff. We have spying and all this shit to do here. But first, the most important thing is we're going to take this army for a walk and go whack Zhang Ba in the face. So it says decisive victory. We are going to go in here and we're going to beat him up. Who does Zhang Ba have with him? Out of curiosity, has Yin Li. Interesting. Um, Yin Li is another officer who... Uh, I, I could be wrong in this, but I don't think Yin Li... Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I need to check. I will check about Yin Li later before I say that and make a fool of myself. I have a feeling Yin Li ended up doing something important, but I might be mistaking him for Yin more because there's another Yin. Anyway, let's get into the battle. Okay, so here we are. 
I did just have a quick check of Yin Li in uh, that break. So Yin Li, yes, he was Zhang Bao's subordinate, and he was one of the officers, high-ranking officers, who uh, took part in huge uh, offensive led by Cao Pi, I think, in 222, um, to attack uh, Wu after like Liu Bei and uh, had had basically launched this attack against uh, Sun Quan and their diplomatic relationship was not very good. He took part in that. He was fighting under Zhang Ba, who was, uh, I think, the general of the East at that stage, general who guards the East, that's it. Um, and they were under the general command of uh, Zhang Yao. And he took part in that and died brutally in that battle. Yes, I knew I remembered him from somewhere. Anyway, this is our order of battle. Um, we are pretty rubbish, to be honest. You have some Yi archers who are very good. They've got a decent range on them and they can move and shoot at the same time. We've got axes who I love. I have been playing as yellow turbans and their troops are just god awful. Um, now I actually have some really good troops. You know what? Put sabers in the center. Um, I would like you boys here. I would like you boys here. Uh, it's a little bit wide, but hey, who cares? One, two, and three. You chaps are going to come right in here. Um, we're going to put some spiky boys on the flanks. Just the guarders. Um, not that they have any cavalry, but it will upset them none nonetheless. You boys can sit back here and we'll wait to deploy you as and when. You three are going up front. Actually, no, Liu Bei, you're not going up front because you're crap at fighting, but the rest of you can fight. Let's begin this. Let's advance. Um, Guan Yu, are any of them stupid? Possibly. Jiao Yun, are any of them even more stupid? Possibly. But you two are going to advance. Let's go. Yeah. You're dead, man. Um, and he doesn't want a duel. That's fine. But the rest of you boys can continue your advance. Just rock up here. They're going to shift up too. Guan Yu is going to take out anyone who comes close. And uh, Zhao Yun, how are you? Flames of the Phoenix, do it. Right, there we are. You get in here. Let's finish him off. Zhang Bai is not going to take this. Right in there. Right how are we here? We're almost in position. Yeah. And Giant's going to absolutely smash him to bits. Guan Yu, do your thing. Do your thing. Right, boys, ready? Let's rain some arrows for a little bit. You, we don't need this. They don't have any archers by the looks of it. Okay, they are now coming to attack us. Here they come, here they come, but in go all of our arrows, and they are going to suffer. Magnificent. Right. Back out of this for a second. You chaps here, I'd like you to swing around this side. There we go. Charge. Advance. You advance up here, you advance here, you boys. Charge. That'll work. All right, they've broken. You guys advance to this side. You take them out. Cav, swing right round their flank. All right, he's running. Uh, you, you're stuck there. Liu Bei, in you come. Everyone, take that off. Axes, let's go. Speary types, in you come. Axes in here. You lot, chase. You lot can chase them. There. That should do the trick. Um, more flames of the phoenix. And these guys will be dying brutally. There we go. It's all over. Nice big splash damage. Come on. Just stung by left. Very, very simple. See, Liu Bei is just not that good at fighting. I know Zhang Ba is a champion, but Zhang Ba is a level one champion. Let's see if we can bring him down. 5.3k. Horses. Come on. That's good horses. You chase them. Yeah, just like that. Um, You're on your horse. Magnificent. Well, you can chase someone off. Who do you want to chase? 
Them. Go. Nicely done. Right, that'll do the job. End battle. Yeah, we barely lost anyone, which is sort of what we expected. Two men, six men. Yeah. Not bad. Ten men from the, from the Sabres. Maybe 20 men from the Sabres, maybe. Twenty-eight men in total. Yep, there we go. They all survived, but they ran away. Tangbai is off. Unfortunately, we can't hire him. Disloyal, I think, is unfair. Um, he wasn't disloyal. He was extremely loyal to uh, Tatar. Uh, disloyal in that when Lu Bu, because he sort of became a vassal of Lu Bu, um, so he decided that when Lu Bu was defeated, he was going to surrender. But that's like saying Zhang Liao was disloyal. They both joined at roughly the same time. Um, and Zhang Liao certainly was not disloyal. We're going to take this because we want the unity. Excellent. Zhang Bao's arrogance ascends. We've taken that. We've got a taste of victory. Liu Bei restores order. The mountains are rife with violent and thuggish criminals. Liu Bei, it is your sworn duty as a servant of the hand to march against these brigands and see them brought before the justice of the law. We need to take Peng Chong Lu Xian and Dong Dong Ping. K. Now, interesting note about Lu Bei and his soldiers. He was not renowned for having the most, you know, well-disciplined troops in the world. Shall we put it that way? Um, they were they were badly behaved soldiers at the best of times. Um, so I think it's a little bit harsh saying that these are filled with thugs when you basically were a thug until this point and continue to be a thug for most of your life. But hey, we're going to jump in here into uh, Xue Xian. Um, that's very easy. We're not going to fight it. In we go. Done. Bye-bye. Very nice. Establishing order. With this settlement's liberation, the people here are freed from oppression. It's a small start, but significant. All of China must know the same freedom to be under the throes of another warlord. Of course. Commander secured, we have Xia Pi. Xia Pi, of course, um, is the famous uh, city that uh, Liu Bei had to take, uh, well, had to take, was in charge of. Then, of course, uh, you you've got uh, the issues that came about between let me change this him and lubu meaning this place changed hands over and over and over again period of time we are going to build that up because we've got some time and money here what do we make here we make commerce commerce experience agricultural stuff here we'll drop that in there and langya langya makes what peasantry right yeah, peasantry, we order state workshops, income from industry, labor, private workshops, conscription, Confucius temples, public order, not wholly necessary. Military infrastructure to guard that area because that is going to go to. No, 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 no. we're going to do this because we're going to get hit with corruption eventually. So we'll do that. That should deal with it. Donghai, we don't own everything. All righty then. Let's have a look here. Uh, Non-aggression packs. Tiankai, yes. We are former... I mean, uh, Liu Bei was an officer under Tiankai. Um, so yes, that will work quite nicely. We don't want peace with Dongba. Non-aggression pact is fine. Um, no, nobody else there. Military access. I think we will run this with Kongrong. Just so we can flash him for some money. Now, what I'm going to do with Kong Rong is see what I can take from him in the short term. This sword could be useful. There, 1.9. And then request money. Just cold, hard cash. Because I believe he's going to collapse and die very, very quickly. There we go, that'll do the job. So if we can, you know, sort it out uh, another way that I don't have to rely on him for money, that will work quite nicely. Kong Rong will give us good money. Chiang Kai, Zerong, Han Empire. We'll trade with the Han Empire. Because of course, you know, the Han Empire's not gonna collapse that quickly. We can always break the trade agreement with them later. Um, we have another trade agreement. Who should we have? 
Kongrong isn't bad, but Kongrong, there's no point, he's going to collapse so quickly. I think Tian Kai is going to get wiped out in a few turns as well. That sort of leaves Liu Chong or Zerong. Zerong is right there. Yeah, if we trade with Zerong, that's going to hopefully prevent him from attacking us. No, he's a cruel tyrant. That's not going to do anything. Right. Not going to be overly useful, but hey. Um, save marriage. Don't know how good she is. Be interesting. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, not done that before. And we'll request some more money. 50. He doesn't have much, so that'll do the trick. Nice. I'm enjoying that. Uh, military access, nothing else there. Non aggression pack, nothing else there. Off to cooperate, no, we don't want to do that. Form coalition. Can't form a coalition with Gongs and Zan. That is disappointing. They don't want unification. Not going to do that. Uh, nope. Okay. That's all fine and dandy. We have a new arrival. Ancillary's gain military. Um, what do you like? Oh, she's a fighter. How nice. I'm afraid we don't have anything to give you. Um, or do we? Or do we? No, we don't. I'm going to give this to you. Here, have that. And then... On this front... Oh, wow. We have everything under the sun. Administrators. Who's a good administrator? 22% construction cost, 15. That's not bad. 25. 17, 13, 11... Right, Mi Fung. You want to be an administrator? You were an administrator, of course. Um, and we're going to put you in Shapi. Put you in Donghai. Maybe. Or we put you in Langya. Put you in Langya because we need to guard this place. Here, you can go into Langya. And then you. 16. 15. I don't want to give it to someone I'm going to use fighting. I feel it's fair. I need the strategist, even though he's crap at fighting. It's fair to give it to Tao Shang and we'll give Dong Hai. Because, of course, you know, his father was in charge of this. As far as chances and everything else go, I will deal with that. Do I want to deal with that now? Chancellor. That's going to. Income from peasantry, all the rest. Grand Commandant is going to give me a recruitment cost. That's quite useful. That's really quite useful. It's going to be quite expensive, though. And this, income from industry. Right, I will think about that next time. As for now, I think, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave it here. We have some assignments to do. We have some other stuff to do. And we need to go and wail on Zhangba. But uh, I think we're off to a very good start. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.